We're going to look at moving bed 17 to a maintenance plan. In the medication room at the children's ward, they're discussing a patient's treatment. It's not drugs she needs, but food. She has anorexia. We'll leave out the snacks from this one and offer her the, the, the main meals. meals, and then it's just three feeds a day. Dr Lucy Etheridge is a paediatrician who specialises in eating disorders. She and her team are used to admitting inpatients when they need to be stabilised physically, but the numbers have rocketed since the pandemic. For some of them, they started trying to eat healthily and exercise, and that was a message that was being given a lot at the time, and that spiralled out of control and led to an eating disorder. For others, they just didn't know how to manage the emotions that they were feeling. They didn't know what was happening with their future. They lost their motivation for things. They lost their support structures. And restricting their eating became a way of managing that real kind of complex emotions. How old are the patients coming to you typically with eating disorders? So um, the, the range is anywhere between about 10 and 17. The average age um, for, for us mostly is about 14, 15. Okay, but 10 year old mm. children who yeah, are. Yeah, we've seen some themselves. quite young children really struggling with their mental health and, and restricting their eating because of that. Before the pandemic, on this ward, they would typically admit one eating disorder patient every two weeks. But right now, out of 17 beds, four are occupied by eating disorder patients. And earlier this year, that number rose to 10. But it's not just the number of admissions that's concerning, it's the length of stay and the severity of the illness. We've analysed NHS data that covers all hospitals in England. Between April last year and February this year, there was a 36% rise in children being admitted as inpatients with eating disorders compared to the previous year. On this ward in St George's, five children were sectioned under the Mental Health Act last year because they were so unwell with eating disorders, they were putting their lives in danger. Most years, that figure is zero or one. These trusts have seen an average 84% increase on the previous year. In Oxford University Hospital NHS Foundation Trust, they sectioned four children during the pandemic, compared to none the previous three years. In Calderdale and Huddersfield NHS Foundation Trust, they sectioned 30 children last year, up from 12 the previous year. It's pretty much just like torture bit inside your head, being anorexic, because you're constantly arguing against yourself. Danae is at home now, but she spent much of the past four years in hospital, mostly in general children's wards. Unlike St George's, many don't have specialist doctors. There's someone next to you who's got a, a, a physical illness, a broken leg, whatever, and the same doctor will see both of you. And he's got, he knows how to fix a broken leg, but he does not have to help you because he hasn't had any training in that. Back at St George's, it's lunchtime. Healthcare assistant Glenn has been redeployed from a psychiatric unit to help eating disorder patients with meals. Well, she, she did extremely well today. Um, it's still challenging, but she did well. Those who can't manage can drink a meal supplement, but if that's too much for them, they are tube fed through their nose in a side room. It's calm today, but sometimes they have to be held down. They scream, they shout, they're, they're so distressed. And the staff sort of pick up on that distress and feel distressed themselves at half knowing that they've then got to put that down that tube against that patient's wishes. They are paediatric nurses, they're not used to having to restrain their patients. Children's wards across the country are responding by upskilling staff, working ever closer with community teams and mental health colleagues, but the sheer number of patients and the lack of beds in specialist units for the sickest young people is having a huge impact. We can't really do a lot of mental health support here on a children's ward. We've got, you know, kids with sort of asthma and pneumonia and tummy problems and having surgery and all those sorts of things here on a children's ward. And that's not the best environment for somebody to recover from a serious mental illness. So although, you know, we work really hard to try and be able to do that as best we can, it's not ideal when somebody's here for a long time. I personally think we're going to continue to see a rise in eating disorders for some years yet. The Department of Health told Five News they are responding to increased demand by investing £2.3 billion a year in mental health services in England. 
but this isn't specifically for eating disorders. And although they're rolling out early intervention services, with children in crisis already, the challenge ahead can't be overstated. Tessa Chapman, 5 News, St George's Hospital.